This is a joint work with Tim Lukas Dietzer, and we come from Friedrich Alexander Universität Erlangen Nürnberg. It's about uh, constructive hybrid semantics. So, for a quick introduction, just what we mean by hybrid semantics. Now, this is a standard example, um, example of a bouncing ball. It's uh, oversimplified and it's not. Uh, not a realistic uh, hybrid program, of course, but it explains quickly various features of hybrid uh, systems, hybrid, uh, hybrid semantics, that's why it's a very popular example. So what we see here uh, is a certain system which changes partly continuously, partly discreetly, and uh, that's what means hybrid. Uh, moreover, for this particular system, we see that it's deterministic. It's also progressive in the sense that um, this uh, um, time intervals between changing the uh, discrete state are always non-zero. And uh, it's interestingly also demonstrating so-called Zeno behavior. This means that so the system changes the uh, discrete state infinitely many times but um, the total time remains finite in the physical sense. This is quite a remarkable feature, which is non-typical for semantics, which we do usually consider in computer science. So, but what would be a suitable language to write programs like this? Well, we proposed, uh, proposed a very simplistic DLS language called Kypecore in, uh, in the previous work. So, and then, um, for example, the bouncing ball can be written like this, just like a while loop uh, and the condition uh, of the while loop is true, so it runs forever. But of course, we don't uh, mean that all such programs are equivalent because there are very many different kinds of divergence. And, um, well, a standard approach to define semantics of such things would be to involve computational monads as proposed by Moji. And since we also um, interested in while loops, we need an additional structure on monads and that's uh, a notion of algorithm iteration, at least uh, a, su a suitable abstraction, uh, which would provide semantics for while loops would be algorithm iteration. So it's an operator which sends uh, maps like this to maps like this. So basically we iterate over this uh, type so that in the result it completely vanishes. Um, right, and we deal with uh, monads um, for hybridness in constructive settings and there's an interesting related work, an interesting context in a sense, um, somewhat unexpected and it's about doing similar um, formalizations with the so-called partiality monad. So it's a monad for modeling um, partiality as the only effect. And uh, there was a work by uh, Chep, Nustel and Veltri um, so on formalizing such a monad in type theory using countable choice. And then the subsequent uh, work by Altenkirch and Danielson and uh, Kraus, um, so building this monad uh, without using the countable choice, using quotient inductive inductive types. And so why um, why is it related? Well, because there's a sort of slogan hybridness as an effect is sort of partiality extended over time. So this is a, some sort of generalization, actually generalization in the proper sense, so, as we will see. Um, a note on implementation. Um, so since it's all constructive, the proofs are non-trivial and uh, it's important to have them formalized. Uh, we did the formalization and in um, cubical agda, which is a recent implementation of cubical type theory. And that's uh, in turn um, an implementation of the homotopy type theory. And the implementation is available under this link. Um, and uh, yeah, so we uh, made a good use of insights of a previous uh, formalization by Dan Ellison of the partiality monad. Mm, right, so the way I would like to proceed would be as follows. So first I outline the hybrid semantics, not assuming uh, constructiveness, and then I show our categorical abstraction over this uh, intuition, then to, to show that this uh, result 
uh, is in agreement with, uh, with what we expected. Uh, I, I provide a characterization of this result uh, in different terms, again, under the physicality assumptions, and then show some very, uh, very few subtleties um, of, of our formalization and then um, counter conclusions. So, right, uh, we're dealing with hybrid systems and, um, well, we would like to regard hybridness as a computational effect, so we would like to involve uh, monads as proposed by Moji. So, just a quick recap, uh, monad can be regarded as a, as a certain type constructor, so it sends sets to sets and has a certain additional structure, and the point of the structure is basically uh, to ensure that if we regard uh, maps like this as denotations of programs, then uh, there is a no neutral program and there is a notion of composition of this program, uh, which is called classic composition. So the axioms of monads in this sense uh, provides precisely what is needed to, uh, to implement this, uh, this idea. And then uh, additionally, uh, to the standard definition of a monad, like I said, we need iteration, meaning then we that we do not need not only a monad but an Elgot monad. So, a monad plus an iteration operator like this, subject to suitable axioms uh, which are just omitted here. All right, and here some motivating examples, like. Um, what can be regarded as uh, hybrid semantics? Well, we can consider uh, consider various flavors. So the duration semantics is like a late white uh, one. This is where the monad as just union of uh, like a domain with successful uh, successfully terminating programs. So the first uh, um, component is a duration which is required to terminate, and then X is the type of the uh, end results. Uh, alternatively, program diverges, and then we don't have any end result, but we possibly have uh, an infinite duration. As, like, as somewhat sophisticated, more sophisticated semantics is evolution semantics. That's uh, when we keep track not only of durations, but also of the whole trajectories. So the um, like um, intermediate resu results valued in some sort of uh, um, state, uh, postulated state uh, object. And then similarly, uh, we distinguish between finite trajectories and infinite trajectories, uh, where the later are for divergence again. So, and what would be the idea? So what, uh, what do, would we mean by, uh, by hybrid semantics more generally? Well, one could, uh, like abstract this away and um, instead take as an input a particular notion of time as a monoid and um, create a, a, a monad um, with this monoid regarded as an input. Uh, but uh, then we also need to uh, um, like recognize the structure uh, over this object. What is this? It's something that uh, has an action of a monoid on it. So that's uh, basically a, a monoid module. So it, uh, it has this operator that we can call later. So it's, uh, it's like uh, the, uh, the uh, monoid module element after uh, this uh, time elapsed, basically. And then the, we postulate uh, obvious axioms um, and then if we are given a monoid and uh, a monoid module, then a functor like this will always be a monad, uh, which we call a generalized writer monad. Uh, in particular, um, so if we take both m and e equal to 1, then what we obtain is precisely the maybe monad. So, um, which would be a, a special case, but like I said, we're interested in, in monad supporting iteration, so does uh, at least the maybe monad support iteration? Yes, one can prove it, but the problem is that uh, this mod, the, the proof will then rely on the low excluded mean. So this makes all non-constructive, and that's really uh, the source of the problems and uh, the reason why um, 
we need something different, some other idea to to build this monad if we do not uh, want to rely on non uh, constructive principles. So uh, what's the idea? The idea uh, is uh, generic and uh, it's known in the category theory and is in fact behind uh, the construction from this previous work that I mentioned. Um, it's the idea of uh, free objects. So uh, assuming that we know how to define a category, a certain category C, and we have uh, um, um, a suitable uh, forgetful functor from that category to sets, uh, then there is a general notion of a free object. So um, a certain correspondence sending uh, a set x, x to uh, fx and satisfying this universal property. Uh, once this universal property is satisfied, so for every uh, x there is fx, then f extends to a left adjoint and uh, we obtain a monad on sets uh, as a composition of u and f. So that would be a generic idea to construct a monad of interest non-ad hoc um, and we need to provide some input to this construction that is uh, to define uh, uh, this category C so uh, we stick to ordered monoids not just uh, uh, not just any old monoids uh, in particular we cover this range of examples uh, so the last one for example here is the monoid of strings and uh, they are all ordered, in particular, um, we require monotonicity of uh, plus, this plus operator is, uh, need not even be commutative, and it need not be left monotone, so uh, for example, this two uh, example would be excluded if we require that. Um, then we introduce a notion of complete M modules, just because we want to, in the end of the day, define iteration uh, by a least fixed point argument. For that, we need uh, uh, complete partial orders. And so they are defined as expected. There is some agreement of the order on the monoid on the uh, monoid module and some uh, monotonicity requirement for the later operator. So by completeness, I mean completeness in the sense of uh, existence of all um, labs of directed um, sequences, directed. Um, and then indeed we can run this scenario that I outlined, this uh, abstract one. So if we take as the category, the category of um, complete uh, uh, monoid modules of a given uh, ordered monoid M, then we can turn it into a category. And then we can prove existence of all three objects and using the specific properties of this adjunction, we can indeed show that the resulting monad is an Elgot monad with the um, iteration operator defined uh, by this fixed point argument. So, and importantly, this theorem now is uh, uh, valid both in classical and in constructive settings because we can uh, obtain this first item by uh, using quotient inductive inductive ties, which precisely. Uh, provide us this uh, construction behind uh, free object, free objects. Okay, but how do we know that the result uh, is actually what we wanted? Well, we characterize the result in different ways, again classically, but that's sufficient for the intuition, at least uh, uh, somewhat. Um, so um, the idea is uh, starting from M, build this domain, so it's a uh, it's a duration, uh, maybe in the generalized sense, uh, plus a value or um, undefinedness, um, some undefinedness token. And uh, every such pair can resolve into something better in the sense of uh, information order, like in domain theory. So we consider sequences, uh, directed sequences over um, this domain. So, um, yeah, so the define the find the order in a suitable way here and then we already can show that uh, uh, mx uh, is an order uh, ordered m module and um, so the, the sequences uh, um, that we're interested in um, well come from different classes for example con convergent one is the one which stabilizes and outputs the result 
after finitely many iterations, but there are also divergent, for example, this one stays the same, and uh, the right one, the right component always con contains bottom. Uh, but there are specific different uh, uh, divergent uh, sequences which um, where the first component always changes uh, and the second one remains bottom and the limit, uh, so in this case is one, not equal to any element of the chain. So that's different, different makes it different from the previous class, for ex clause, for example. Um, and then yeah, we uh, using the ideas from domain theory to define a partial order on the sequences and then um, form a symmetric closure of this and then form a quotient of mx uh, under this equivalence relation. So, and note this uh, notation here, these are uh, equivalence classes of sequences like this under this equivalence relation. So, and then using this notation, we can um, now uh, define a complete and module structure on mx tilde, on the quotient, and show that the resulting free com uh, uh, the resulting complete m module is a free complete m module on x, and that's of course uh, only classically valid because uh, because of this equivalence cl classes occurring everywhere. So this involves lots of uh, choices and um, of course subsequently proving that the result uh, on the right hand side doesn't depend on the choice. Um, right now if, uh, uh, if we adopt this notation for m0, so this is the uh, free complete uh, uh, m, uh, m module, mod m module um, on an empty carrier then, well, first note that this and this must be equivalent because uh, both these uh, uh, sets are defined by um, the same universal property up, up to isomorphism, so they must be isomorphic. But moreover, uh, L tilde X decomposes as a disjoint union. So we are back to this uh, original generalized writer monad. But that's indeed just, the, uh, just because we are classical here. So we've got the excluded middle. Uh, assumed and uh, that's why it simplifies this way. So and then this results uh, so as expected in the, the first two examples. So but for example, if we take uh, as an input the monoid of positive reals, then the result is not uh, really computing extended uh, positive reals, but it actually generates two instances of positive reals, and that's because this equivalence relation behind uh, mx tilde is too weak. It cannot, it cannot for example, uh, see that these two sequences are the same, well, must be equivalence, uh, equivalent because, uh, um, well, it cannot detect it. So that's why <coughs> it's possible to um, tweak this construction basically by introducing conservatively complete M, modu uh, M modules um, and by including this axiom that uh, joins on the monoid must agree um, as indicated with the joins uh, on the monoid module. And uh, that's only in the case if this uh, join of, on the monoid exists because uh, uh, we don't assume a directed completeness. And then one can basically uh, develop the same, so, so, same sort of theory and uh, also introduce a monad, uh, now uh, L bar, and one can introduce an analog of this uh, chain completion construction and prove uh, similar uh, isomorphism for L bar X. And now when we run this construction, on, then we see that uh, R plus bar is indeed uh, um, uh, just obtained by a join in infinity to R plus and similar for, uh, for trajectories. Um, so, all right, and now I can just quickly uh, mention some points about our formalization. Of course, uh, the, um, the base of the of this formalization is intentional Martin-Dov type theory, so we um, 
comply with the formula types discipline, so which is quickly recapped here. And then already in this framework, we can inter well axiomatize or express various properties of types, like saying that a, a type is a preposition. So a type is a preposition if uh, all its inhabited, uh, inhabitants are equal. Uh, that the type is a set, the type is the decidable. So now here it's uh, explicitly clear that decidability um, means precisely excluded middle from a logical uh, point of view. And then uh, um, one type that goes beyond the original intentional um, Martin Love type theory is, uh, um, is, for example, the type of propositional truncation. Well, um, the type constructor of type to positional truncation, which takes any type as an input and creates a, a type of mirror propositions just by enforcing equality of all inhabitants. And that's a so-called quotient inductive type. Um, and that can be used, for example, to express easily uh, what means uh, the axiom of countable choice in the one line. So if we have uh, uh, for every uh, n, p of n is, is true, uh, then this implies existence of the choice function, uh, but without producing this choice function. That's, that's the point of this bracket. And uh, our monads, L tilde, L, L bar, they rely on a more sophisticated construction, which is of this kind as quotient inductive type, but, uh, um, but more advanced. I'm not going to um, explain it here. Um, just yet another little thing uh, quite specific to what we have and what wasn't the case, it wasn't the issue with the previous uh, partiality monad. So there are different notions of completeness. One can uh, consider and formalize chain completeness, um, but also two different uh, um, versions of directed uh, completeness, because we can say that for every n and every m, there is k and we can produce that k or that it just exists, uh, but uh, we don't know what. Uh, and that, that describes two different uh, notions of directedness. These are two different types. And uh, there is an intimate connection between these three notions. Uh, they imply uh, one another, uh, but not in the opposite direction. In the opposite direction, uh, one can only get uh, the implica implications if one assumes some not entirely constructive principles like countable choice, for example, or decidability of the underlying set A. And that's precisely not what we want to assume because uh, in our case, our A uh, contains the type of reals and uh, the type of reals uh, doesn't have a decidable notion of uh, Mm, less or equal predicate on them. So currently our monads are based on uh, on intentional notion of completeness, which is this inter uh, this middle one. Um, uh, right, and uh, then I just uh, move to the further work section where I uh, refer to this once again. So um, um, Right, uh, we, we've got lots of questions which are still open, which are still interesting. Um, and uh, one question is uh, the concept of these three objects, uh, which I showed you. Um, um, and we implemented them, but only in a specific case, we do not have a generic um, implementation of, that, uh, uh, of them in the categorical sense. That would be um, an interesting um, interesting question um, then uh, like i said uh, we uh, we base uh, l tilde l and l bar on intentional completeness it's not very clear what happens if we try to base it on the extensional notion of directed completeness um, and then um, um, Right, uh, part of our proofs, uh, non-constructive ones, can still be uh, incorporated in AGDA by postulating the uh, corresponding properties. 
And of course, we're interested uh, in doing other flavors of hybrid semantics, for example, most obviously by combining it with non-determinism and implementing it. Thank you. So um, I've seen uh, two questions uh, written by Tom Hirschowitz. Uh, so maybe the best is if I allow you to speak. So Tom, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. You hear me? Yes, yes. Hi, everyone. It's probably a stupid question, and I think I understood the, the answer. The second question is, in fact, an answer. So I was, <laughs> yes, I was, maybe you can raise the question and answer it. <laughs> yeah, I was, one, I was just wondering what you gained by passing from monads to junctions, basically. But uh, what I understand is that maybe um, you can perform the construction constructively with... Yeah, that's, that's precisely the point. <clears throat> although I didn't quite get why it, it would go through with the junctions. Yeah, I, I can say something. Uh, do, do you hear me? Uh, yeah, I'm... yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so th that's the point that uh, you basically uh, look at this uh, classical version of this construction and then you extract some universal property and then you make do with that universal property instead of the original idea, which made sense only classically, but the, the abstraction can be interpreted uh, non-classically, uh, well, constructively too. And uh, basically what we've discovered, well, at least we didn't know it, that in type theory, this quotient inductive inductive types, they are basically responsible for um, creating free objects um, from category theory. So we, we just axiomatize it in the category theory way, and then we can translate it to type theory um, by this detour. OK, thanks. Does it answer? Yeah, I, I think it would take a half an hour uh, <laughs> if, if I wanted to really understand the, the bottom of things. But that, that's enough for now, maybe. Thanks. Thank you. OK, uh, so I cannot see anyone asking questions. Um, uh, so, but I, I, I might have one uh, general one, which is, uh, have you have you programmed some applications uh, where 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 you um, have applied this or, or all this machinery to actual uh, um, programming in a in a hybrid uh, setting? Uh, not really. Uh, so this is a very early stage uh, of development. Uh, so we. Um, we basically, the, the main thing that we've done in Agda is we uh, implemented this main theorem that uh, um, the construction and we, we mainly used Agda as a proof assistant. Uh, because it's, it can be regarded as a programming language in a way, uh, but we basically, basically used as a, as a programming, uh, as, a, as a proof assistant. Okay. But that's uh, that's all for the work. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So I don't know how to. Uh, is there anyone who? I uh, know because no. Uh, yes, yeah, is there anyone who would like to raise his hand or her hand, so that I could see that someone is asking something? <laughs> well, if not, then then thanks a lot. Uh, it worked. <laughs> So maybe we should now move to another talk. So I should probably stop to share my screen. So thank you, Sergey. I don't know if people can clap hands or something. I, I'm not very familiar with the virtual ways of saying thank you, but I, I'm seeing it on behalf of everybody.